Kevin Feige, the usually tight-lipped head of Marvel Studios, just revealed some interesting news about Charlie Cox's Daredevil. But what does it mean? Let's talk about it after the jump. During the interview rounds for Spider-Man No Way Home, Kevin Feige, the man himself, the head of Marvel Studios, was asked by Cinema Blend about Charlie Cox's Daredevil, and he did give an interesting response. He said, If you were to see Daredevil in upcoming things, Charlie Cox, yes, would be the actor playing Daredevil. Where we see that, how we see that, when we see that, remains to be seen. Now, this is very interesting because for someone like Kevin Feige, who usually answers a question with a question about another question, this is actually a lot of information that he gave to us with this one sentence. So right off the bat, the most obvious thing, if we were to see Daredevil again in the MCU, the person that would be playing Daredevil is Charlie Cox. We know that. But why would he say this now? It's such an interesting time for him to reveal this. You know, Spider-Man No Way Home is one of the many rumored places that we were to see Daredevil next, and that's two weeks away. And then you have Kingpin rumored to appear on Hawkeye. So if all of this was a surprise, why kind of give it away now? Kind of feeding into those rumors. Well, here's the thing. I think he 100% did this on purpose. I feel like this was a chess move by Kevin Feige. You want to know why? Because he knows that people... Uh, expect Daredevil to show up in No Way Home. He knows that people ha kind of have it on their radar that Kingpin is going to appear in Hawkeye, and he's building hype for these two projects. Not that Spider-Man No Way Home needs more hype, but we know that there was a press screening for Spider-Man No Way Home already, and we know that they were only showed the first 40 minutes of the movie. So, in my personal opinion, I feel that not only is Charlie Cox in Spider-Man No Way Home, I think he's in that first 40 minutes. I think Kevin Feige knows that there are people out there that already know that he's in the movie. So he's kind of just adding the fuel to the fire to kind of get people to go see it. And one, he's kind of testing the waters to see how much interest there is for the Daredevil character. And he already knows that there's a ton of interest. Like, ju just him saying this blew up the internet. Like, people were going crazy over it. Plus, this also kind of sort of confirms that we will be seeing the return of Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin in the Hawkeye series. And with an Echo Solo series announced, spinning off from Hawkeye, it's safe to assume that we may be seeing Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio appear in that as well, because Daredevil and Kingpin specifically have such a close relationship to Maya Lopez, aka Echo. But what does this mean for the Marvel Netflix characters as a whole? The Marvel Netflix universe, per se, was always a bit of a gray area in regards to the continuity of the MCU. The shows existed in the MCU because there was a lot of references to the events of the movies in the show, whether it was the first Avengers or having, you know, like Captain America action figures show up in some of them or seeing Avengers Tower in the background of a lot of shots because all of these shows took place primarily in New York. You know, it existed in a world where the events of those movies happened. But, on the flip side, the movies never really referenced the TV shows at all outside of Agent Carter because you have the appearance of James Darcy as Jarvis in Avengers Endgame. So now, after the bad breakup between Marvel Studios and Marvel Entertainment and kind of transitioning all of the power to Kevin Feige after all the success he's had and after all the trust he's garnered with Disney and Marvel. I think he is now in a very interesting position. He's in the position to kind of look at back at those properties which he had to unfortunately divorce himself from due to the split between Marvel Studios and Marvel Entertainment and he gets to reevaluate those characters and reintroduce them into the MCU proper in any way he sees fit. And I think it's very interesting to see what he's going to do. Because ever since Loki, we are now living in a world with variants. So, yes, we can get Charlie Cox back as Matt Murdock, as Daredevil. We can get Vincent D'Onofrio back as Wilson Fisk, as Kingpin. But it may not necessarily be the same exact one we saw in those Netflix series. But here's the best part about all that. They don't have to address any of it. They could take, they could literally cherry pick what they want from these stories and use it. And if they don't want to address anything they didn't like, they don't have to. That's what's so great about going forward from here. 
we can kind of say like, oh, this stuff happened, but maybe that stuff didn't. And I think that's what they're going to do. Now, does that mean we're going to be seeing all the Netflix characters return? Unfortunately, I don't think so. I think that with the colossal failure that Iron Fist was, I don't think we're going to be seeing Finn Jones back as Danny Rand or any of those characters return outside of maybe Jessica Henwick. And that's a shame because I do think if given the chance to succeed, Finn could have been a good Danny. But that series itself was a sign of the problems that Marvel Entertainment had running the television side of things. They were just cranking out shows for as cheap as possible and trying to do it in as little time as possible. With Kevin Foggy now in control of everything, like having a say in everything, I think he's going to take what he liked from those series and he's going to use it moving forward. And I think what he didn't like, he may change and we may get a different version of those characters. Like, I would love to see Kun Lun and the other Seven Cities of Heaven in a Shang-Chi sequel. I would love to see Dan Yuran and the Iron Fist in a uh, Shang-Chi sequel. That would be a great place to first reintroduce the character into this world and then kind of branch him off from there. You know, Luke Cage would be another character I'm very interested to see again. Um, Jessica Jones. Will Kristen Ritter be back? I think outside of Luke Cage and Danny Ren, I think we are most likely to see Kristen Ritter back as Jessica Jones as opposed to the other two guys. Uh, and of course, I do think John Bernthal will be back somewhere down the line as a version of Frank Castle, aka The Punisher. But I think Luke Cage and Danny Rand, I think those are going to be the two that they kind of go in a different direction with moving forward. But I think it's very exciting news that Kevin Foggy wants to play with these characters. You know, he's very infamous for not really wanting to touch things that he wasn't directly involved in. But with Phase 4 going the way it's going, I think we should be pleasantly surprised with all of the characters that we're going to be seeing popping up in different properties. And as a Marvel Comics fan, as an MCU fan, you should be more excited than ever because the possibilities are now endless. It is, if the rumors are true, and if Charlie Cox is in No Way Home, that just opens the door. And guess what comes out the same week as No Way Home? Hawkeye Episode 5. So if you have the reintroduction into the MCU proper of Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio as Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk, you're going to blow the doors wide open on this franchise. And it's going to help expand the street level aspect of the MCU, which is something that we have been lacking very much in recent years. So I am super excited for this. Let me know what you think down below, guys. Let me know what Marvel, Netflix characters you want to see reprise their roles in the comment section. Give this video a big like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, because we got a ton of videos coming out within the next couple of days. So until then, guys, catch you later.